Hello, it is Friday, October 21st, 2022. And I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It's a Friday puzzle today, which means no theme. It is a themeless puzzle. Might be tricky. I think yesterday was broadly agreed to be on the gentler side for a Thursday puzzle, all things considered, despite the tricky theme. Uh, so I don't know. Who knows what that means for today? I was about to draw a conclusion. Then I realized it's impossible to do so. So anyway, uh, this uh, hopefully not impossible itself edition of the Daily Solve has been brought to us by uh, Laura Sexton, Victoria Rajishka, and as always, the inestimable hood monster, the invaluable Timothy Mark, and the indomitable Shulmaster. So thank you so much to the five of them, benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign, for their generous support in sustaining this channel and this series. I do very much appreciate it. So thank you to all of my benefactors on the Patreon campaign. And thank you as well to all of the backers of any level. Um, thank you if you are one of those people who has backed the Patreon campaign. In return, you can get access to all of the bonus videos that have gone up on the channel to date, as well as the new ones that go up each week, including the most recent Boss Words Fall Themeless League competition puzzle, which I solved uh, yesterday, put up on the, the Patreon channel yesterday. So enjoy that if you're um, uh, if you are eligible to receive those videos, I suppose. And um, if you'd like to become a patron, you can do so at patreon.com slash daily solve. And there's a link in the description field underneath the video where you can also find a link to the daily solve discord chat server. So consider joining that community as well. And do consider subscribing to the YouTube channel. Thank you to everybody who is a subscriber. All right, let's get on to today's puzzle. As noted, it's a Friday crossword. It was constructed by Raphael Musa, and this is uh, his first puzzle, a debut construction for the New York Times. So this will be uh, interesting to see what, uh, what he's made for us. And it was edited, as always, by Will Shorts. So let's start solving. Company that acquired Skype in 2005. Wow, I'm not sure. I mean, I think... Is Skype not currently owned by Microsoft? I think it is. I haven't a clue. Oh, eBay maybe in four letters? eBay owns or has owned plenty of internet things. I bet that's the answer. I think that's vaguely familiar to me. Colleth College Athletics Channel. Is it ESPNU? The university version of ESPN, the US Sports Network? I bet it is. And... If something's okay, it's so-so, maybe? Not sure about that, but let's... I mean, well, it's it's a perfectly plausible answer, but there might be something else, so let's check the downs. Ties for Vaqueros. Uh, are they bolo ties? Um, those sort of types of string ties, perhaps. And then here we have Today Preceder. Okay, so these, these all look correct, because this could be USA Today, which is the name of a newspaper. And of course, when we read Today Proceeder, we think, well, yesterday, yesterday preceded today. But no, often you'll see something like Proceeder or something before something else, and it means a prefix or another word that comes before that word. So in this case, we're just referring to the newspaper, the name of the newspaper, USA Today, which USA preceding today. Pigeon pose for one. Okay, this must be a yoga pose, an asana. Um, I don't think I know that one. I've heard of crane and downward facing dog and I'm sure plenty of others, but I don't think I know pigeon. I wonder what that looks like. Opposite of flat line. Yo-yo? If a graph, you could say a graph flat lines. People often use that um, in medical contexts, but it could be any graph, I suppose. And then if it's yo-yoing, it's going up and down. And I sh presumably there are other contexts other than graphs to which this can be applied. But I think that's probably the answer. Okay, to act casual is to play it cool, probably. Yeah, that looks that looks very plausible to me. And uh, unadon ingredient, so uh, eel, Japanese Japanese dish. Um, pretty sure that's right, but let's check the crosses to be sure. Help out with Thanksgiving dinner in a way. Oh, serve maybe. I was yeah. I don't know. <laughs> it seems plausible, but 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 it could be other things. So let's check this. Go, the light turned. 
honk or beep or something? I'm not sure. Sir, serve might be might be incorrect. Weaselly animal. A stoat, maybe? Maybe this isn't maybe this isn't right. Let's try that and see if that helps. Pirouetting, say. If you're on toe, this could be you could be a ballet dancer pirouetting, and then you'd be on toe. Um, so the, a pirouette, that that type of spin. So let's let's see if that looks any better. Go, the light turned. Now that would allow honk to work, but then <laughs> played cool would be incorrect, and also eel would basically need to be incorrect because n l there wouldn't be plausible. So what is this? Dried chili, an anch ancho uh, is a dried chili in Mexican cuisine and other. I mean, you could use it in other contexts, but I think I mainly know of it via Mexican cuisine. Uh, so chili pepper in this case, uh, help out. Oh, baste, maybe basting a turkey. Oh, so this is toot. Right. I see. So it was a, it was a honk. I was on the right, the right track. And one of the reasons we can infer that is from these brackets. So people often ask what these means mean. And what they mean is that we're, we're, um, we're going to be looking for something that is a sound. It's nonverbal. It's not, you know, so toot isn't, it's not that somebody's saying toot, toot, toot. Um, this is representing a sound, the sound of a car horn. And that's what's going on with those brackets. And you'll see that often with animal noises or other, you know, onomatopoeia, other things like that. Okay. Dark hue named after a type of glassware. I'm not sure offhand. What about this one? The other one. No, not that. There we go. Straightforward enough. No, not that. The other one. So we have played cool and no, not that, which are two, um, two phrases that exist in sort of a similar tone, I guess I would say. They're both sort of casual phrases. Okay, now what is this? Dark hue. I don't know. Bottom of the sea or something? That doesn't seem right at all. Might as well try. And what is this? What aspirin can prevent? A blood clot because it's a blood thinner? I think that's probably right. Oh, bottle green? That's That might be it. Bottle green. That, that sounds... That's a pretty distinctive shade of green. Okay, so what about this? Boo. <laughs> boo. So it could be boo as in, um, you know, heckling somebody. Or it could be boo as in, you know, it could be a pet name for someone you're close to. Or it could be, does it sound made to scare somebody? I don't see what that would be in this context, though. Bay, maybe? So if we're, if we're using it as the term, in the sense of a term of endearment? Might as, oh, might as well try it. Can't hurt. There we go. That's, that worked perfectly well. Okay. So what about this? Angler's supply. So angler is, is uh, angling, fishing. So bait, bait for fishing. And hold up. Hang on a moment or a second, actually. The, each of those is six letters long. I don't know which is more plausible. So this is actually sort of in the same vein. Play cool. No, not that. Hang on. These, these are all uh, sort of relatively straightforward, but casual phrases. So they're kind of, it's not a theme, but, but it's, it's of course sort of, you could call it a theme if we didn't have the existing phrase theme for crosswords that had a much more specific um, meaning. I don't know, maybe call it a motif. Destination, end. So that, that could be hang on a second. Okay. And load, a load, a ton, lots of something could be. I'm going to actually leave it in for now. You know, you know what? I'll do something I never do. I'm going to engage the pencil tool. There we go. I don't really know why. <laughs> there was no particular criteria here for this. I just decided to do it. Um, partially to remind you that it exists. You can use the pencil tool. You can um, toggle in and out of pencil to enter things into the grid about which you're slightly less certain. So you'll remember that, that they may not be correct. Posture that might be hard to maintain. Don't know. This could be a, a literal posture, stand your posture while standing, or it could be a position, something like that, more metaphorical posture. Hay ride seat, a bale of hay on a on a uh, wagon or something. Mauve relative. It's 
It's a relative of mauve. And five letters that fits here. I'm not sure offhand. Excessively admiring. And that's all. Goodbye. When repeated, a 2010s dance move could be the nay-nay. That's come, come up more often than maybe you'd expect in the New York Times crossword. I suspect because it's an incredibly helpful collection of letters. In fact, almost the same collection as bay. Um, it's just a different initial consonant. Okay, blank bowling. 10-pin bowling or what bowling? Not sure. Headlight, question mark. A halo above the head of a saint being depicted in painting or something, but that would make this wrong, which it could be. It could be something else. Headlight aura. The Solomon's lily smells smell of rotting fruit to flies. Um... Is it good or bad to fly? I mean, presumably it's good. Fly, you, flies like rotting fruit, so it would be... What? What would it be? <laughs> Something positive, an attraction. I don't know. Okay, let's get out of here. Where else can we go? Manhattan purveyor, a bar? Um, because a man, in this case, a Manhattan could be a cocktail. I mean, we might, we might be referring to the borough of New York City, but bar would fit in three letters. Currency whose symbol is this B with that uh, vertical bar, um, a bot, I, I would think that would be. Which I think I misspelled recently in a crossword for a moment as B-H-A-T. But uh, no, it is spelled in this manner. So what do we have here? Accelerated in a way. Gassed? Uh, gassed it? Like, I don't know, put your foot on the gas? Accelerator pedal in a car? I don't know if that's right. Um, and what do we have here? Don't move. Oh, wait right there. Yeah, this, this, wait right here, I suppose. This does feel like a bit of a, this does feel like an intentional motif. Play it cool. No, not that. Hang on a second. Wait right there. I mean, these are, the, the, these feel more linguistically comparable than would be selected by random chance, I think. Uh, this this feels intentional. It's a nice little pseudo theme for a Friday puzzle, I think. Make dough from scratch. Make dough from scratch. Oh, question mark. Sorry, I didn't see that. So um, that's a pun the, indicating a bit of punnery or wordplay. So presumably dough here is going to refer to money. And from scratch it can also sort of be money. I mean... Yeah, so what does that mean? This looks sebaceous, oily. Um, that's dealing with, uh, or at least the context I've seen that in would be related to skin. Um, you could have a sort of, I don't know, sebaceous growth, a sort of oily growth. Sorry, not the most pleasant topic of discussion here. Many a promoter of human rights or voting rights, for sure. It could be an NGO, a non-governmental organization. Um, so some kind of advocacy organization or aid organization, something like that. Okay, accelerated in a way. F fast moving or something. Oh, won the lottery. Right, okay. <laughs> so here, scratch is being used to literally refer to scratching a, um, you know, uh, a scratch-off lottery card. So that's how you'd make the dough. Very good. Okay, well, won the lottery. I, I, I'm staying, maintaining my my belief about this crossword, that these are sort of intentional, not, don't, don't have connected meanings, but just sort of broadly comparable tone of language. Accelerated in a way. Past or fast something. Let's keep looking down the grid. So what? So what? And? You might ask. Yeah, that sounds right. Word with horse or hero, war horse or war hero. Th that, that's plausible. Place to store some barrels. And item often seen in home bathrooms, but rarely in public ones. Hand towel? You, you would typically in public bathrooms get either paper towels, disposable towels, or increasingly um, air dryers. So, oops, and towel, not tower. 
So I think this is plausible. What an investor hopes for? Well, an investor certainly hopes for a financial return. The parallel radiuses only, so this is referring to um, the bone uh, in the human body, maybe maybe animals as well, um, the radius and ulna as opposed to radius, the um, you know the measurement in a, in a circle uh, going from the center of the point to the circumference. Okay, um, stable youth, so colt, so uh, young horse, and I, I don't... I always feel, I feel as though <laughs> terminology dealing with horses and the age of horses and sort of function of horses is always very specific. So maybe this is more, maybe this is more particular than just a young horse. But anyway, it, it's certainly related to what it's describing here, a colt, a youth in a stable. So that's, and once again, the question mark indicates a bit of punnery or wordplay. So stable is being read in this other punny manner to refer to a horse's stable. Oh, place to store some barrels. Right, sorry, this is not won the lottery, but win the lottery, of which I would have known had I properly read the clue, which is to make dough from scratch, win the lottery, not made dough from scratch, won the lottery. So that was entirely an oversight on my part. And anyway, we noticed that because a place to store some barrels could be a wine cave. So um, that's common in France, the idea of a cave, a cave in, in French, uh, underground sort of a sort of unfinished cellar and you could keep wine there things like that so um i haven't seen that terminology so so much in the english-speaking world to be totally honest with you wine cave isn't i mean i'm sure it's used but it's not something i've particularly encountered anyway it's shortest at the equator dawn would be shortest at the equator and vibed with dug maybe you enjoyed something you dug it you vibed with it and sclera neighbor so this is a part of the eye uh, near the uvea also in the eye so uvea has come up a fair amount i would say in the crossword maybe not recently but i've seen it in the crossword before a part of the eye something worth remembering i suppose if it's not part of your vocabulary comes together oh this looks like gels oh it's not oh interesting right okay they parallel radiuses, ulnas. I should have been more attentive. Here's another thing to which I should have been more attentive. Um, I When I looked at this, I thought radiuses. Oh, that's interesting. I would have thought radii, which is certainly what it is in the mathematical and the geometric context. But I figured, oh, well, maybe not anatomically. But I put in ulnae, and what I probably should have done was think, well, radiuses is probably going to match with ulnas, as radii would pair with ulne, which is what I put in um, as the plural. So uh, yeah, the, I wonder if this is if this answer, answer suggests these are these are um, equally acceptable, sort of linguistically acceptable possibilities in English. That that's probably the case. So anyway, that allows this clue comes together to be gels. So there we go, straightforward enough. Uncapped, bareheaded, right? You're not wearing a cap. And what else can we do? Excessively admiring. I want this to be a U. Um, laudatory, that's not really necessarily excessively. What would be excessively admiring? I'm not sure. Well, let's let's finish let's finish looking through the puzzle, which we've not yet done. Necklace bit could be a bead. You could have a bead of a necklace of beads. Blank flash, hot, you could have a, a hot flash various um, sort of bodily contexts, where the piano was invented. I guess this actually, there's no particular reason this, there's other, probably other flashes as well. So I shouldn't jump to conclusions. Anyway, let's look at this, where the piano was invented. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure where the piano was invented. Don't know, we'll need to, we'll need some crosses on that. It'll be interesting to find out though. For real. And jacks are male ones. Probably ends in an S. Sizes up. Eyes, you size someone up, you eye them. Um, red, maybe. And where the piano is invented, right. Okay, if this is indeed eyes, which it maybe doesn't need to be. But if it is, what is this? Okay, let's just keep looking. Orchestrated performances, question mark. Question mark, so... 
you know, what? sometimes I see these punny clues and I don't know which one is meant to be the pun because I can imagine reading this as orchestrated performances, meaning performances by an orchestra. Or I could imagine reading this as orchestrated performances, meaning coordinated action. And I honestly don't know which of those is meant to be punnier than the other. They both seem like plausible ways to read this without needing to be cute about it. Um, so I'm just not sure which I'm meant to be misled by or vice versa. So I don't know. And m maybe the answer is there's an entire, there's a third, much punnier way to interpret this that I'm not seeing. Buzzes while buzzed. Drunk dials? I bet that's it. Right. So buzzes is, in other words, rings somebody up, calls them on the phone while buzzed, while, while under the influence of alcohol, while drunk. So drunk dials. There we go. That's very clever. Buzzes while buzz. Feature of some TVs for short. Um, I don't know. What about this? Native Canadian. Could be Cree, a member of Cree, one of the Canadian First Nations. Um, orchestrated performances. Where it's at. Where it's at. Hmm. Folded in French. Not sure. Red me. A wine? Folded in French. That's interesting. I wonder what that is. Where the piano is it? Oh, Italy, probably? That would make sense. Piano forte. Um, that's not very surprising, if so. But this doesn't look right. So maybe it's not. For real. Or maybe wine is incorrect? Boy, that looks pretty, pretty smooth. Orchestrated performances. Well, it probably ends in an S. Jacks are ma oh oh asses right a, a jackass of course a male ass and then obviously we that phrase has become adopted into language to mean uh, you know an idiot or a fool. Okay, so for real, no lie. There we go. Okay, this wine wine I think is going to be incorrect. So Italy looks like it's winning the battle of. Italy versus wine, which I wouldn't have thought would have been a conflict. Um, and then, fo oh, plie. Plie folded in French. That looks much more plausible to me. Okay. I think that's probably right. So red, maybe, oh, could be ripe, perhaps, like a tomato. So that's, and that's why maybe is in there. Someone asked, actually, in a comment, what does it mean when you see say? And so if, if, this, if this had read, for instance, red, say, um, it would be pretty similar. I don't know if there's maybe some incredibly fine distinction that on the editing side of the crossword that means this should be maybe rather than say, but I think in this, you could imagine either one serving the same purpose here. And what that means is this is an example of the thing. So red doesn't literally mean ripe, but if something's red, that, that might indicate ripeness in certain contexts. So may, red maybe is ripe. Red say is ripe. Red say being wine would probably be a better example. Red say, because red is an example of wine. So if you're picking a wine, you could say, oh, red say, that's that's a wine. So that, that's what that's getting at. It helps if you kind of read it to yourself aloud in that manner of speech. It sort of communicates what's going on there a bit. This looks like concertos. Yes, orchestrated performances, concertos. Okay, so this is referring to a, um, a performance by an orchestra and then in a concerto, in a concerto you would have a featured instrument, like a piano concerto would be um, a nice cross actually there with our Italian piano. Um, you'd have a, an orchestral piece with a very significant featured piano uh, part to it. Okay, world weary feeling, ennui. There we go. Uh, that's sort of elevated boredom, I guess you could say maybe. In book form, a, a bound, books are bound. So if something's in book form, it's bound. And where it's at, oh, the a venue. So right, I see. Where the thing is taking place, it's taking place at the venue, wherever it is. Feature some TVs for short. It could be DVR. Is it digital video recording, I guess? Um, where you can schedule your television to record things in, in advance for you. Updated as a kitchen, you could redo your kitchen. So updated, redid, 
and accelerated in a way fast tracked. There we go. I don't know why that one took me so long, but it seems to have. Uh, but there we go. All right. So now we just need to finish off these these remaining bits of the of the uh, grid didn't stay put as mascara. So the mascara ran, didn't stay put. And the large hadron collider organization is CERN, that Swiss um, based organization with that famous part. Is it a particle accelerator? The large hadron collider, that absolutely unbelievable <laughs> looking machine. It just looks looks incredible. Okay, so now we have to finally solve these these bits. Posture that might be hard to maintain. Posture that might be hard to maintain. Um, I'm not sure. What about this? Mauve relative and blank bowling. Lawn bowling? That's something. Is lawn bowling the same as bocce or... Are they different things? I have played bocce before. Does that mean I've played lawn bowling? Is that different? I'm not sure. <laughs> okay. Uh, mauve relative. Oh, well, here it could be lilac. It's sort of a purpley kind of color. With that L, that was helpful. So headlight, an idea as in, is that referring to the sort of metaphorical light bulb above somebody's head if they've just had an idea? Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, actually, that looks right, because excessively admiring could be adulatory. And there we go. That allows me to finally ink in this penciled ton. And this looks like facade. Is it posture that, may, uh, posture that might be hard to maintain? It might be hard to maintain a facade. So it was, in this case, a metaphorical posture rather than a physical state. And that's all goodbye. We're done, as we are with the crossword, with the Solomon Lily smell of rotting fruit to flies is a lure. There we go. It will lure the flies. So with that, we are indeed done, I think. We are. All right, there was the Friday puzzle. So I think that was, for the most part, a pretty smooth solve. And then it was it was this really this area over here that slowed me down. And then I think once I moved past it, things went relatively smoothly once again. But that that was that was really the little corner that gave me some trouble for whatever reason. And I think we we do have a sort of almost theme. <laughs> we have an almost theme, a sort of pseudo theme going on in today's puzzle, maybe with play it cool. No, not that. Hang on a second. Wait right there. And then they start getting a little bit less, a little bit less similar. Win the lottery, yeah, concertos, drunk dials. So drunk dials is obviously a casual phrase, but these these aren't quite in the same linguistic vein, but uh but we did. I, I think there. I think there was something going on here. I don't know. Like I could be entirely inventing this. <laughs> oh, and even this. It can't hurt. That's sort of similar to me. Um, I don't know. And so that that makes them all cross each other. Technically, actually, I, I could be. I could be um, grasping at straws here. But there was just something about this puzzle that felt very um, co cohesive and coherent. So I don't know. Let me know if you if you felt similarly, or if you think I'm 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 just completely out of my mind. So anyway, there we go. That was the that was the puzzle for Friday, October twenty first. And I don't actually think I had any corrections I needed to read from yesterday's puzzle. So um, I think with that, I'm going to draw this video to a close. I hope you enjoyed it. I will of course be back tomorrow for the Saturday crossword when we uh, move to a more difficult themeless puzzle. Most likely. Should be the, the toughest of the week. That's that's typically uh, what's intended. So fine, we'll just have to find out. You'll have to come back and watch the video. I hope you do. But until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Friday. Take care. Mm -hmm.